Right. Very active this morning. That's wonderful. Great to see you all here. My name is Tim. If you're visiting this morning and you don't know, welcome to those watching online as well. We are in this series, or just started last week, called Impossibilities. We're really, we're looking at the possibilities of what the Holy Spirit can do in us, through us, and around us. And so this whole year, or not this whole year, Skip just freaked out for the whole year, but <laughs> for the first six months anyway, next six months, we're going to be talking about Acts and the Holy Spirit as well. So I think what's intriguing is, is as I have pastored churches and met with other pastors and other people within the body of Christ, is it seems the Holy Spirit is the least talked about, the least understood person of the Trinity. It almost seems like the, the, the church, the Holy Spirit was evident and, and active in the first century, second century, like all the way up till we got the printing press and, and Bibles started to be printed and then we kind of set the Holy Spirit on the shelf and said we have the Father, Son, and Bible. And, and said, well, Holy Spirit, you did your job, you got us to the written word, now all we need is in the book and that's all we ever need to know is what's here and we've set the Holy Spirit aside. And then we also have some denominations that have essentially created themselves out of the book of Acts. They, they've read Acts and said, wow, we have missed the Holy Spirit, and so now everything we do is going to be about here and about Him. And so we want to understand who the Holy Spirit is. We want to understand His role within the early church. We want to understand His role that He is doing in us and through us and His role in our church today and understand that he is equal with the father and the son okay it's not there's no like hierarchy here and it's these are they are equal together and, and, and so we we want to understand that and jesus was absolutely clear to the disciples wasn't he i'm leaving i'm going to sit at the right hand of the father and i'm sending the holy spirit Okay, he will be the one here on earth. Jesus isn't walking around anymore, if you were wondering. He's in heaven at the right hand of the Father. It is the Holy Spirit who allows us to meet Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit who allows us to speak to Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit who allows us to speak to the Father, right? It is the Holy Spirit who lives in us, who is the one that allows me to be in communion with the triune God. Okay, so we want to make sure we understand that and get that and so as we go through this if there are theological things about the holy spirit you don't understand feel free to text or email or call or let me know and say hey could you unpack that a little more or could you give us a little more understanding about this aspect of the holy spirit because we want to make sure we understand who he is because we're gonna he's gonna be our main character for the next few months as we go through this study so with that said, I, I want to hit a couple theological things this morning as we start. So these three passages, the first is the second verse of Genesis. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The next one is from Numbers, I think, chapter 22. And the Spirit of God came upon him. And the next one is from 1 Samuel. And the Spirit of God rushed upon Saul. Now, I just took three passages from the Old Testament. There are many passages that talk about the Spirit of God being present. The Spirit of God was present at creation. The Spirit of God has been present eternally, along with the Father and the Son. And then, second verse of Acts that you looked at a few weeks back, until the day when he was taken up after he, meaning Jesus, after Jesus had given commands through who? The Spirit of God. After Jesus had given commands through the Spirit of God, or as we now call the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, after Jesus had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. So Jesus, walking the earth, filled with the Spirit of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, He is giving commands to His disciples, to His apostles, who He had chosen. So the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, has existed eternally, was present at creation, was present throughout the Old Testament times that we read about, and is present 
now living in us, okay? Holy Spirit always present. And now His role is very significant within us because He leads us to Christ. He leads us to Yahweh, right? He is the one who is moving the church forward. And we're going to see the church birthed this morning in Acts chapter 2. Okay, another word. That, uh, uh, not another word, but I guess a word that maybe you know. Do you know this word? Glossolalea. Anybody know this word? I was using the Greek pronunciation. We would probably say glossolalea is probably how we would say it in English. Well, this word comes about, I think a lot of times we think this is a scriptural word, but this word comes about in 1879, or at least it's the first time this word is in print. It's in 1879. This guy in England says, we're going to make a word for this idea of speaking in tongues. And this is the word he uses. And what he does, pretty smart guy, he puts together two Greek words. Gloso, which means tongues or language, and laleia, which means to speak or talk. Pretty, pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. He puts these two words together and says, this is the word he's going to now use when Scripture talks about, and we'll see this a couple times in Acts, and when we know it, Paul writes about it, when Scripture talks about speaking in tongues, or this idea of speaking in tongues, this guy in England, 1879, says, this is the word I'm now going to use, and people begin to use this word of speaking in tongues. And, and what this word means is speaking in a language that no one else understands, but that Paul says needs to have an interpreter present so that interpreter can tell the body, everybody else, what that person said. Okay, so this idea which Paul talks about, which some say exists in Acts, we'll unpack that a little bit, is, an, is a language that None of us would understand that someone else would say, hey, I understand that, and here's what it means in our language, okay? Now, it's important because some would say that's actually what's occurring in the text we're looking at today. Mm, many others would say it's not, so we'll look at the miracle, and we'll let the Holy Spirit tell you what, what, what's happening here. And then as we get later on in Acts, and we, we see that Gentiles then begin to speak in tongues, we'll, we'll begin to unpack, is that this, or is that something else? Paul talks about this for sure, we know, in his letters. But I want us to know what it means and the difference of what might be occurring in the text we're looking at this morning in, in chapter 2. So if you haven't turned there yet, turn, turn to Acts chapter 2 at this outrageous story now now maybe you have read this story multiple times maybe you have looked at it once maybe you've never heard it but really want us to get this picture of what's occurring here this is an outrageous story it's actually the beginning of the story is a horror film okay because if this were happening in this place right now i think some of us would be screaming and freaking out Okay, if what's occurring here, if we were even watching this in a movie, this would be outrageous of what's occurring. So if you recall, right, the, the disciples and about 120 people, they've, they've gotten together, they're, they're meeting together, and, and, and they're praying together, right, and they're trying to figure out what to do. Jesus is gone, so they do. We saw last week what they know is they pray, and then they pick a 12th. We need a 12th disciple, so let's pick another one. Then they continue to meet together. And, and we don't know exactly what they're praying about, right? But we got to believe Jesus said, hey, you're going to get power when the Holy Spirit comes. And so maybe they're praying for power. But we don't know what kind of power. They don't know what kind of power. They don't understand the power that they're going to receive. What does that mean? Power to lift heavy objects? Power to overthrow the Romans? Power to, to what, right? They have no idea what this means, power of the Holy Spirit. And I have to believe what's about to occur to them, the power that they receive, must have been shocking and mind-blowing. So we kind of want to put ourselves there, okay? So as we read through this, use your wonderful imaginations, God-given imaginations, to kind of put yourself in this scene that's outrageous. So here's what it says. When the day of Pentecost arrived, means 50th and so what this is, Greek-speaking Jews had renamed a, a, a feast, a Jewish feast, Pentecost. And, okay, and so we have a bunch of people coming into Jerusalem. They were all together, meaning the disciples, 
probably the 120. We don't know who the all is that Luke's referring to. We have to imagine more than the 12. Okay, so a bunch of people are together, praying, hanging out, talking to each other, having a meal, I don't know, playing jacks. I mean, I don't know. But they're hanging out together. And then suddenly, okay, so there's no build up to this. There's no like soft entrance. There's no, it's suddenly coming from heaven a sound that's like a mighty rushing wind. Now, the last few days, we've had some serious wind gusts, haven't we? I mean, some serious wind. But imagine the mightiest rushing wind that is nonstop that you've ever heard. And you're sitting in a building, apparently, or sitting in a place, and all of a sudden, this wind comes, the sound of it. You don't feel anything, though. It's, it says it's like the sound of a mighty rushing wind. So there's no, you hear this wind sound, but you don't see anything. You don't see the trees move. No one's hair is blowing. No one's beard's blowing, right? No guard. It's just this sound. Maybe it sounds like a train. I mean, like a, tor- what tor- whatever. But you're sitting there, and this sound just fills your space. You'd be freaked out, wouldn't you? You'd be freaked out. It fills the entire house where they're sitting everybody in the house apparently is hearing this crazy wind sound if that's not enough to freak you out then divided tongues which are like fire appear to them so now we're all sitting around hearing this looking at each other like oh this is a little freaky what's going on and now what we begin to see is what looks like a tongue of fire not like i love what the esv here says resting on each other i don't know about you but i'm taking my cloak off trying to put the fire out on your head right i mean imagine the wind and now you see what looks like fired tongues of fire sitting on each other can't imagine what's going through their minds i can't imagine what they must be experiencing they jesus has died they're trying to figure it out they're wondering what power in the holy spirit means and here they are together praying for quite a few days nothing's happened and now this is happening well if that's not enough luke tells us they were all filled with the holy spirit and what happened to them Well, they began to do something that was being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, what we don't know here, and and one day we'll find this out, right? What we don't know is, it really sounds like the Holy Spirit's moving their mouth and making the sound come out. Because what's occurring is they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the language or the words. As the Spirit spoke as the spirit was moving in them they all began to speak other languages outrageous wouldn't you be completely freaked out if you're sitting there listening to wind and then there's fire all over us and then all of our mouths start to move in languages we've never spoken And it says other, so we get the idea that there's plural languages going on. We haven't got to the next part yet. Plural languages that we're all sitting around speaking. And we don't know, most likely, what each other's saying. We don't even know what we're saying. But our mouths are moving, saying some words. And we I don't what we don't know is do they even know what the words mean that they're saying, right? I mean, many of you, I know some of you, I don't know many of you, but some of you speak multiple languages. And so when you're between, right, you know the words in these multiple languages. But we don't know if this, this utterance is coming out, whether they understand what they're saying, or they're just like, what? what's happening? Words just flowing. And imagine what they're thinking. Is this what it means to have the power of the Holy Spirit? Sound of wind? Fire that's not burning us? And words coming out of my mouth, I don't even know what I'm saying. Unbelievable. And now Luke tells us the significance of this thing that's occurring, this amazing miracle that's occurring. There were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation, Luke wants to tell us, under heaven. All these people have come into Jerusalem for this feast, for this Pentecost feast, and we're going to learn they've come from a lot of different places. Luke may be 
exaggerates a little bit saying every nation, but a lot of different people coming into town, a lot of different Jews coming to town for the feast, speaking different languages from different places. And at this sound, now we don't know whether that's the wind or their voices, a combination thereof, but at the sound that these, all these people are hearing, the multitude came together. They're all milling about. They hear a sound. We don't know if the, the 120 have come out of the house or they're still in the house, right? We don't, we don't get that. Luke's not telling us all of this, but they, this multitude, they're milling around apparently the city. They hear the sound, and they all come together and gather together. That's pretty wild, and they were bewildered. I don't know, that seems like an understatement to me, <laughs> right? Is, is they're hearing this crazy wind sound, possibly. I'm not sure they see the fire. He doesn't tell us that. And they hear a bunch of words. It says they're bewildered. Here's why. Because each one was hearing these speakers speak words in his own language multiple miracles occurring here so the, the, the question becomes are these guys the the disciples just speaking whatever words maybe you know like a, a gibberish that no one understands and that each of the people on the receiving end receive and hear in their own language or are the disciples speaking all these different languages all these different languages, and these people are hearing it in their own language. I'm going to let you figure that out. I think what I've, re what I've read about this from, from folks who don't have a skin in the game, right, they're not trying to promote a theological thing, is the language, the Greek language, language would suggest they're speaking in other languages, that they're all speaking in the language of the natives, which should be a pretty significant missionary uh, um, uh, point for us to understand that when we go to nations of other languages, we should learn native languages instead of making them learn rhyme, right? That, that would seem like the Holy Spirit, even from the beginning, is trying to say, hey, you need to learn the language of those you're going to speak to. That's a side point bonus there. Um, and again, we get the understatement of the day. They were amazed and astonished. You got all these people. They're amazed and astonished by all these languages they're hearing because here's the question they ask. Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? Remember the Galileans? They're from Nowheresville. They're the hillbillies. They're from Hicksville. How could these people from Galilee know any other language but their own? How could these uneducated people possibly be speaking our language? Not just my language, but Abraham's language and Jacob's language and wherever he came from language. And the other thing that seems to be occurring here is all these people who speak different languages in this next section seem to understand each other as well. Now, maybe they're speaking a common language, but Luke doesn't tell us that. But all these people who speak different languages, hearing the disciples speak to them in their own language, are communicating with each other. Unbelievable. So they're amazed. And how is it that we, okay, they're, they're talking to each other, all these people, 100,000 or more expected there. We don't know how many are hearing this, though. How is it that we hear each of us in his own native tongue? How is it possible that we're, we're and we're going to learn where they're all represented from? How is it possible that we all can understand this madness that's occurring? This impossibility. Do, do we get the impossibility here? The impossibility of these Galileans. What do they know? Not much. And all these other people with a different native tongue. And the Holy Spirit took what should be absolutely impossible. There's no way that these Galileans should be able to speak to these people who have all a different native tongue and them understand. And the Holy Spirit made this impossible thing quite possible. So here they're from. Someone's talking. Someone's narrating in this group. We're Parthians, we're Medes, we're Elamites. 
Mesop residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Ar Ar Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues. And what are they hearing? I think this is a great missionary message too. The mighty works of God. They didn't start to jam Jesus down their throats. They didn't start to say, get saved or burn. They didn't start to say, you got to get it now. They, didn't, they just started to tell the wonderful story of an amazing God. And all of these Jews who have come into town for this festival, they're all hearing in their own native language the wonderful work of Yahweh. The wonderful story of God. Church, I think that is an amazing point we don't want to miss. That when we're sharing and building relationship and getting to know people, we need to just talk about how amazing God is. We don't need to talk about anything more than that to start and let the Holy Spirit lead the rest. The Holy Spirit leads the rest of the story, by the way, and will continue to lead the story. But they're just sharing. And, and again, I wonder, these disciples, I mean... Do they even have any idea what they're sharing? As these other languages are flowing from their mouths, is the Holy Spirit letting them know, here's what I'm having you tell them? I don't even know, but the, how amazing that would be. Is we would be speaking another language we don't understand ourselves, but the Holy Spirit saying, here's what you're saying. Oh, so, yeah. Just the mighty, wonderful works of God. What a great message for us to hear as well. And all were amazed. Again, understatement, perplexed. I think I might be a little more than perplexed and amazed. And they're saying to each other, what does this mean? They don't know. They don't understand why they're hearing the might of works of God. They know about God, right? These are Jews coming to Jerusalem. They know about God. They're hearing the mighty works of God coming back to them in their own language from a bunch of Galileans. And they're like, what, is, what does all of this mean? But some of them say this. They're drunk, essentially. There's a group of people that, that are just looking at it saying they must just be high, inebriated on new wine. Because we know that's how new wine is going to work. And so that's what must be what is happening. And isn't that intriguing? And we'll unpack this more in the, in the weeks to come, but isn't that intriguing? That, that I think us, us, us God followers, us Jesus followers, we have an expectation of how God will show up. And if he doesn't show up in that way, we dismiss it. And we dismiss him. Maybe these Jews expected God to show up in their own predefined or predescribed way, their own understanding of how God works, the box, their own box. And when God didn't fit into their box, they missed the possibility of the Holy Spirit. Church, are we guilty of that today? Are we guilty of this idea that, that God only shows up in certain ways? Right? I mean, denominations are built on this. God doesn't speak any more than what's said in here, right? There's some that would say there's no more revelation possible. So, God, if you don't read it here, you know, it's never going to happen. God can't do it. There's others that would say the Holy Spirit is just all over the place, just doing whatever. We all have paradigms, don't we? I find this fascinating for an infinite God that we, that we still just can't imagine that God could show up in any way God so chooses. And God could ask people to do anything God so chooses. And God could raise up anybody God so chooses. And God could put... To, to preach anybody God so chooses because it breaks the paradigm we have of how God works. And we will see possibilities as impossible if we keep limiting God. Don't you want to be just sit in fascination and amazement and say, God, just blow me away on a daily basis on how you want to show up? Or would you rather live in this box that says, no way, God only works this way because that's the only way I'm safe and comfortable and not challenged and whatever it is. But I'm fascinated by educated, God-fearing people who limit an infinite God. I don't understand. They can't make me understand when they try to explain it to me. Because infinity is what? Thank you. The possibilities are endless. 
The possibilities of how God will show up are endless. And when we start to say, not a chance, right? And, and we all have been guilty. Let's, now, maybe you don't want to call yourself out. We all have been guilty. I've been guilty when I've looked at someone and say, <laughs> no way. No way did God call that person to do that. No way did God ever know. I mean, what that person's telling me, what they experienced, you know, not, I'm, I'm sure they're making it up. I'm sure they exaggerated. I'm sure because that just doesn't fit how I think God would show up in that person's life. Church, let's not be that. Let's be a group of people who believe the impossible can be absolutely possible through the leading of the Holy Spirit in us and each other and others. Others who don't even believe the same as us. What? Others whose theology is far out. What? Others who, who may have no theology. What? An infinite endless God through the power of the one whom he sent and left here on earth the Holy Spirit can make anything that we view impossible as possible and he starts his mission by making people speak other languages and other people hear and then what possibly is even people talking in other languages to each other and hearing it or maybe they were all speaking Greek or Aramaic we don't, we don't, understand, we don't know but it doesn't matter this amazing Holy Spirit shows up and says, here's how we're going to birth the church. Here's how we're going to start this thing. We're not going to be safe. We're not going to be like what everybody's expecting. We're, we're, what we're going to do is make this loud sound come. We're going to set everybody on fire, and then we're going to make people speak language they have no idea what they're saying. Oh, that's a good idea. And then everybody sitting here is going to receive it in their own native language. Let's see how that goes. Well, next week we're going to find out how it goes, right? So continue reading starting in verse 14 to 41 for next week. But we're going to find out how it goes. And what the Holy Spirit does when they're receiving this amazing miracle. And so my encouragement to us, I guess my challenge to us, is expect the unexpected. If you're willing to dive into the, to the pool of the Holy Spirit, so to speak, if you're willing to say, okay, okay, Holy Spirit, I know you live in me. I know you're God and you can do anything. I'm opening myself up to anything. Woo, who wants to pray that prayer today? I'm opening myself up to anything. And when I say anything, that means infinite number of things that you would have for me. Do you want me to speak another language? Do you want me to go to some place and learn another language to speak to other people? Do you want me to learn another language because my neighbor speaks another language and I've never really spoken in his language to him? Do you want me to learn the language of, of my homeless friend who I don't understand his language? Do you want me to learn the language of, of this marginalized person? I don't even understand what's going on. Right? When we say to the Holy Spirit we're open to anything, we better be prepared to be moved to any number of things. And let's stop thinking stuff is impossible. Where there are people who are willing to submit to the power of the Holy Spirit, anything is possible. And so we must ask ourselves that question. As a body of believers, are we that group of people who are open to anything that the Holy Spirit might want to do in us individually and corporately so that everything is possible through Him? That's scary. That un makes me uncomfortable. That's like maybe not that prayer today. But I think it's the prayer that brings life to us and others as we just say, Holy Spirit, this impossible story that we've just embarked on, this impossible way you've come onto the scene and the way you're birthing the church and, and what, what's going to happen next, we're open to what you want to do with us as well. So I just want to take a minute, even before Lucas comes, to close with, with an amazing song. Just sit here in, in quietness and stillness. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Allow Him to refill you this morning. And speak to Him as you feel so led to speak to Him. And then Luke is going to come and play. And we're just going to sit in that. And then as, as you are led to sing, you feel free to jump in and join in. Let's just spend a few moments in silence.